thank you for what you've done and are doing and are continuing to do here in this community. It is amazing the mobilization that you have brought to a, a, a group of volunteers with direct impact on students' lives. And to all the students and faculty and administrators that are here today, let me also thank you for being here and engaging in this and so many other programs. I can't think of any more important work that we can be about as North Carolinians than engagement with and improvement of our public schools. You, you have a movement here, and that movement needs to expand, and it needs to be energized, and it needs to continue to be mobilized particularly at this point in our state's history, because if North Carolina is going to compete in a global knowledge-based economy, which is present today, intellectual capital, the creation of it, the growth of it, the maintenance of it, and the expansion of it, is the competitive advantage that we must have and we must deploy. And we have to do that all over North Carolina. Not just in Charlotte and Greensboro and Raleigh, which does in fact enjoy resources that other regions of the state do not necessarily enjoy. Hence the reason for a movement, a collective voice that will engage with our policymakers in Raleigh and beyond to make sure that they understand that the people of North Carolina care about their public schools, want productive, meaningful investments made in them with the right level of accountability for that investment, and that if they fail to heed that cry, there are consequences to that. Politics matter. Engagement in democracy matters. And you are in, engaged in democracy, but we need more of you in order to build that movement across the state that we need to protect and enhance public schools at all levels, from birth to postgraduate work. So while we're here today to celebrate wonderful successes, and we must do that even more, than we have been. Let us level set just a bit about what work is left to be done in public education. Only 17% of high school students met college readiness benchmarks from the ACT exam here in North Carolina last year, forcing some community colleges and universities to lower their admission standards. 17%, 49% of our college going students, aspirants, 49% did not meet any ACT benchmarks. <clears throat> Nationally, teacher turnover rate has incre increased in 2013 to 14.3%, up from 12.1%. Let me, from two, in 2012. For the business people in the room, <coughs> if you have a turnover rate in your business on an annual basis of 14%, you would probably summon your board together and your senior leadership team and say, we've got a problem and we've got to do something about it. Over the last four years, the schools of education in the UNC system have experienced a 27% decline in applications. We've got a turnover problem, and we've got a pipeline problem. And only a third of North Carolinians age 25 and older have a post-secondary degree or an associate's degree or higher. The talent pool that we need to compete in a knowledge-based global economy is not as large as it needs to be. So we've got plenty 
to do. And you know that because you're at work making a difference. I am a product of the North Carolina public school, born and raised here, educated here in North Carolina. I was the first person in my family, and I mean my family, in the history of my family, to go to college. That was made possible because the taxpayers of this state donated their tax money to keep tuition low. And I was able to graduate with the support of my parents and many, many others and the taxpayers and didn't know a nickel. Unfortunately, that's not the case for enough of our North Carolina students today. But I'm in no, in no means a unique story. In fact, I don't want to be a unique story. And you don't want this story to be unique because it is our obligation, I think, to make sure that all of us that are in this room that care about public education provide all of that which made us successful and permits us to come and sit in this fine setting today and enjoy a good job, we must make that available to the young people in this room. If for no other reason, it was done for us. And therefore, why it is so important that we all engage. Now let me go back to the word collaboration. I believe that it is the tradition and the heritage of North Carolina that when there's a hard problem that we all identify, what do we do? We come together, we roll up our sleeves, and we go to work on it. We have a history of collaboration to solve big problems. I believe that collaboration today is at a lower level than it has been at any other time in our history. It is hard to keep your senses about you when the political acrimony is so shrill that all you want to do is cover your ears. But it, that makes it even more important that those of us who believe in collaboration, who believe in public education, keep our energy as high as it has been in this room at the beginning of this program and channel it for the better, betterment of our public schools. Let me leave you with a phrase that you have probably seen or heard, but one that is always with me. It, it went in a frame and sat on my desk the first day that I started practicing law in Lenore, just up the road, in 1978. And it goes something like this. A hundred years from now, it will not matter how big your house, what kind of car you drove, or how much money you had in your bank account, but for the fact that you made a difference in the life of a child. That's, right. That's what you're doing. Keep it up. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you.